When I first started making this video, I was planning to just focus on the truck walk saga. But as I started looking at the clips and trying to get the story straight, I started to remember how crazy and mind-blowing this time was in the Bopoverse. It's one of those stories that has so many twists and turns, and every time you think it can't get crazier, it just does. It's a story that definitely deserves a Netflix documentary, but for now, you'll just have to watch my video on it. The whole truck walk saga turned Bobby Lee being a Reddit mastermind was a whirlwind. Whirlwind. The way Brenda handled this throughout the saga reinforced why he's so disliked, and it showed the world how big of a bully he really is. And in this video, you'll get to see Fifty Shades of Brain Dump's redactedness. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. The story starts with Trash Tuesday, a podcast with Annie Letterman, Esther Pavitsky, and Kalila Kuhn. On one of their episodes, while having a giggly little girl talk, Annie dropped the truck walk story on us. While she's telling the story, Kalala says the same unfunny comedian slid into her DMs as well. I had a guy that was like, why don't you walk me to my truck, this married guy, where I'm like, and we know him, I'm not going to say who it is. He's like, I know him. Why don't you give me a walk? Why don't you give, like, you should walk me to my truck. I'm like, so what, I can blow you? Like, <laughs> he came for you? Their... Oh, he came for me so hard, and we know his chick. Mm -hmm. On New Year's Eve, while he was having dinner with his family, he was like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, left him on red. He but was he like, knows well, I hate that I'm with my yes. in-laws right now. Do you want to go? He At did that to that me. that is like... So one thing you probably noticed is that no names were mentioned, but there were a few clues thrown in there that really helped the P.F. Chang's intelligence agency immediately figure out the owner of the truck in question. Car. I finished my spot being very good at comedy, you not being good at comedy. <laughs> And then, That's a so, clue! By the way, this was literally all the information people needed to know. And right away, everyone knew it was Brendan Shaw. It was all over the comments of their YouTube video. The Fighter and the Kids subreddit went wild with it. There were songs, hilarious memes, and clips made about it. Even Annie started leaning into it. It was officially viral. On a side note, I actually find it so funny that Brendan Shaw is so synonymous with being the unfunny comedian. So with the truck walk going viral and introducing Baba's redactedness to the masses, he started to get a lot of shit from everyone online and most likely his wife as well. He is a known serial tutor, so his Mexican mamacita probably wasn't happy. So what does Brenda do? Well, he's completely level-headed and professional about it. He goes on the Tiger Belly podcast, apologizes for his wrongdoings, clears the air, and lives happily ever after. Psych! You know damn well that didn't happen. Instead, Brenda went full redact. And kids, you never go full redact. So behind the scenes, Brenda texted Bobby Lee a YouTube video with the Trash Tuesday clips. The video was titled, Bobby Lee's wife confirmed Chwap tried cheating on his wife with her. Then he texted Bobby Lee saying, He texts Bobby saying, you've been harassed for six years straight and you've had it and you're finally going, this is quote, this is a direct quote, mm -hmm. you're finally going after anyone who harasses you online, including right. comics, that you have spent half a million dollars on monster lawyers and that you have friends in dark places who are going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. To which Bobby says, okay, I'll talk to Kalila. Mm -hmm. You can easily visualize Brain Dumb saying, I got monster lawyers B. Oh, and I would love to know what his friends in dark places are. What is he? The fucking god Bapa? So Brenda tried to tell Bobby Lee to tell Kalila that the Trash Tuesday girls need to announce on their next episode that the comedian they were talking about was not Brendan Shaw, which is literally the stupidest thing you could possibly ask for. But hey, that's how we got here in the first place, by Bapa being a D1 dumbass. So this is when the Trash Tuesday live episode aired. During the episode, they mentioned that the unfunny comedian may potentially be suing them. I don't know. So Dumois is a celebrity like gossip account and a couple maybe about a month ago they posted something about our show. It This post on the go gossip site said like we had a lot of controversy behind the scenes and tension. That we, had, we were a part of a big scandal and mm. that the tension you were feeling was real amongst Nobody us. Nobody felt any That scandal that they were referring to had nothing to do with the three of us and it was because potentially we were threat a lawsuit then annie and kalala had a few things to say to the anonymous unfunny comedian and i'll that say this to, like that person, up, yeah. to that person who threatened us i'll say this you think you have a one over me i fucking dare you motherfucker <laughs> i dare you let it out of your chest because that is actually not a real threat you think you're threatening me but it's kind of that information's already out there you little bitch i just want to say this like my currency is not money my currency and where i see value power is in jokes so 
I'm rich and you're broke, bitch. So come <laughs> after me. You've got nothing on me, you unfunny piece of shit. During a Trash Tuesday live stream show, the girls and I talk about someone threatening to possibly sue us. There was a Dumois article that said there's um, a girl podcast that is going, to a uh, going through a lot of internal trouble because a much bigger podcaster is trying to sue them. Um, we assumed it was us. Also, based on the text that um, Bobby had showed me about you ha spending half a million dollars on monster lawyers, I assumed, oh, of course it had to be us. Well, hold on. After this, Brenda went full out after Bobby. He threatened him by saying that he might need to get nasty with Kalila, referring to outing Bobby and Kalila's open relationship to the world. This exchange pissed off Kalila enough that she reached out to Brain Dumb herself. During the phone call, the dummy let out the FBI investigation going on against Tiger Belly. He said that he had proof linking Bobby Lee and Kalila to create and controlling the fighter on the kids subreddit. Along with that, he said that he had proof of possible child stuff going on on the subreddit. I want you to hear the rest straight from Kalila because it's so fucking bizarre. Um, a video of child abuse on the subreddit mm. where they noticed a barrage of comments linked to one IP address linked to a computer from my home. Right. As they continued to investigate, they were able to retrieve 300 pages of evidence that mm -hmm. either Bobby or I were responsible for the six years of subreddit harassment towards you. All six years to one home address. I said, but Shab, we've only lived here for two and a half. How is this possible? Then it's so funny that it literally took two seconds to completely disprove the 300 pages of evidence. Like, hey dummy, we haven't even lived in the same address for six years. I'm actually convinced that Mr. Schlob got scammed. I bet you that some random dude on the internet sent him some simple scripts and threw in Bobby Lee's name in there and scammed half a million out of this dude. Then I said, let me get this straight. You're telling me that while investigating a child abuse case, the feds were like, yeah, let's put this beaten baby case to rest and pursue Shab's online harassment instead. Plus, why are you doing all of this? <laughs> Over a story I told on my show, I never said your name. You said, that can't be true. I said, roll the tapes, listen, go back. Open your ears and hear it for yourself. Wait, so let me get this straight. Braindum decided to make a mountain out of a molehill over the truck walk clip, which he never even watched? Bro, what are we doing here? Way better. You apologize mm -hmm. profusely. You say you're embarrassed mm -hmm. after realizing we actually did never said your name on Trash Tuesday. We come to the agreement that I will not be mentioning or alluding to you in any way moving forward. Um, but I still demand that you send me the 300 pages of evidence against me, Bobby, and my company because mm -hmm. that is a serious allegation. I have. So Baba, with his big, thick tiger tail in between his torn hammies, apologized and agreed to settle the beef. And then he released his second special, Gringo Poppy, to critical acclaim. He was re signed by the UFC, where he went to beat John Jones and become the heavyweight GOAT. Fight! Again, you know damn well that didn't happen. Instead, Brenda decided to go running to Papa Rogi. I was hearing from our friends in common that you had flown to Austin to speak to Rogan about the situation. You were telling Rogan, Whitney, Schultz, anyone with an ear slanderous things about me, that you hired a private investigator who was able to incriminate me for six years of Reddit harassment towards you and just overall assassinating, assassinating my character. At this point, I decide that our previous deal to not talk about each other on the podcast was off. When Brenda did the Flagrant 2 podcast, he actually got called out with the Trash Tuesday beef. And oh, was it glorious. What's, what's with the Trash Tuesday beef? When are we going to settle the Trash Tuesday beef? It's it settled as far as, uh, you know. Uh, did you online. try to wog any Letterman <laughs> to your truck? No, it doesn't make sense. No, no. <laughs> It's her perspective. When you watch that clip, you can see Schlob didn't expect to be asked that. So instead of lighting them up because he's a quick witted comedian, he just stumbled and mumbled through his response. Then he got asked if he actually has a truck. Do you drive a truck? No. <laughs> oh, really, dude? <laughs> hey, guys, this is Brandon's tricked out truck, and he can't get out of the comedy store. What's up, Brandon? So, yes, this is indeed the infamous truck that started this whole thing. But Brenda sold the truck shortly after, and now some civilian is driving it. With the deal being off, Bobby and Kalala went on H3 and let it loose. Bobby went into detail about when Brian Callen and Brendan Schaub called him screaming. They threatened my career. 
They called me a coward, a pussy. You've always been a pussy. They said they would expose me. They, you know, that you were going to expose me to Rogan and all these people and that I should get a lawyer and that I, um, I mean, this is what you, you told me. And, it, and also just, mind you, it was at a level 10 of rage. It wasn't like a soft-spoken, like, you know. Very I mean? aggressive. Yeah, it was extreme, you know what I mean? Threats, and then they're because bullies. They are. Yeah, it sounds like you, they're trying to bully you, and it sucks. So let's go over the details. Baba created a dumbass narrative of Bobby Lee being a Reddit mastermind and orchestrating six years of harassment towards Baba and his family. And you know how Brandon's rationale went. Well, Asians are good with computers and Reddit, so it makes sense. Then, to lend some credibility to the story, Brandon made up this whole, well, it was discovered by the feds who were investigating Changs for some bad child stuff. Then the feds happened to find out who's harassing Brandon Schaub and immediately notified him of these haters. And now the feds have 300 pages pages of highly classified documents that, conveniently, can't be shared because it's an ongoing investigation. But for some reason, Braindum has the, all these top secret documents on his phone. Like what, what are we talking about here? It doesn't make any sense. And even Kalala calls him out on it. She says that maybe he made this whole thing up so that his response to the Trash Tuesday talk doesn't seem insane. And it looked foolish for you to be this fragile over something. Some three girls said on a podcast it looked foolish so in my end the way i understand it is we need to come up with a bigger story about kalila to incriminate so that my reaction to that trash tuesday talk doesn't seem insane no Sadly, Baba's narrative fell apart real quick, since Bobby, while being Asian as shit, is well known as being technologically inept and doesn't even have a computer. Good old Bobby Lee can barely operate a toaster and doesn't even know how to log into his own email. Even Mr. Schlob's co-host, Chris Dophelia, called Bobby Lee to laugh at Baba's expense. When all this thing happened, Delia called me laughing, right? And Delia goes, you don't even know how to... You don't own a computer. He answers True. the phone with his iPad. He, he goes, you don't, you don't know how to get on your email. And, mm -hmm. I, and he was laughing. I, I know. What this is. In fact, I've had calls from everybody, right? Huge names in the podcast room laughing like... After the H3 podcast, Papa reached out to Kalala to bury the beef once and for all. Then the Trash Tuesday girls talked about it for the last time. May 7th, which is the day after H3... You asked that Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. You asked to talk. You apologize for everything. You say you're ready to take full responsibility. You asked to be on the podcast. I say yes, and here we are. I, did not, I don't want. Well, to. I, you know, I didn't realize he was being so bullied that he was afraid for his life. Is what he was saying. And I guess when he asked me to walk to the truck, he wasn't wanting to do sexual favors. I'm so embarrassed by that, but he needed like an escort because he was scared that the haters were gonna come for him. <laughs> and I actually, guys, I actually made a petition to not be mean on the internet anymore. <laughs> it's safe to say that the petition did not work. Papa is still the butt of the joke and has earned his way up to a lol cow status. This saga gave birth to so many memes and viral moments that I would actually make the argument that this single storyline accelerated Brenda's downfall like no other. It showed everyone Brenda's true colors. What pushed it even further was comedians picking sides, and there was no shocker that no one was on the side of Braindum, except for his old buddy Rinks. For the end of this video, I want to talk about a few of the clips that weren't brought up during the video itself. The first one is Brendan Schaub saying that perhaps Annie misunderstood the walk me to my truck offer. Perhaps Baba was actually offering her a ride. As far as she's saying, I I asked her to walk my car, or give her a, a ride. No, I I think that I you know I cannot speak for her. If that's how she feels, she's valid to feel like that, and I'm telling you, that's that never happened. Okay. Next, let's watch Brenda explain how the investigation came to be. But again, when it crosses over into criminal and this other stuff. And they get notified, and they get notified because a member of that group is mm. abusing a six-year-old child with autism. Mm. And then the Reddit moderator gets affected, and they start talking. So then they look into it, and mm -hmm. that's how we get here. And they look into it, and the, they go, hey, let you know, one of the six accounts that has done most of the posting is associated with, with Tiger Belly. That's it. That's all the proof I needed. Case closed, buddy. This is what's interesting to me. Explain this however you want. When I notified you guys of the harassment and, and going back to Tiger Belly, that account stopped posting, took the Tiger Belly email off, and changed it. It's never posted again. Do you know how Reddit works? No. No.
Like, it's so damn stupid. The more he explains it, the more idiotic it gets. On top of that, apparently Callan has been known to be going around town, blaming multiple other people to be behind the subreddit. I was just like... Oh, and I, have it, I also have it, it on excellent authority mm -hmm. that we're not the first people he has threatened that whole Reddit thing about. Brian? He has used that excuse on multiple people. I know you're responsible for Reddit. So when I heard that... Callan has? Oh, yeah. Bro, these dudes are such boomers when it comes to tech. I fucking love it. Lastly, let's talk about the 300 pages of evidence. I have a briefcase. I have it all on my phone. Okay. The reason I can't send it to you because the ongoing investigation. Investigation for the b child abuse thing? For There's six counts on there that you're talking about pedophiles. You're talking about horrible shit. I'll show you after the show. I want the audience let, let me get, to think let, that let you me, actually showed us something you never did. I can't, I can't send you that the documents. So okay. you physically have them in your possession. So they I can show it to you right now. When we get off, I can show you. As soon as we get done, I will show you all the shit I have. Right. To absolutely no one's surprise, Brenda never showed them the evidence. Rumor has it that the feds are planning a huge raid on Tiger Belly Studios any day now. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. As Brendan Shaw would say, it's water under the rug. <laughs> um, define bullying for me. Like what? Like Callan, bu like Callan bullied you. Okay. But my thing with that Clyde, do you think that's nice? That's that's where it gets dicey, mm. it, and it would have to get so dicey. It's, it's dicey because you're rolling the dice.